Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.5. In this video, we're going to explore how to work with multiple objects that were created from classes. So let's get to it. So in this example, we've added two additional classes, one for the tree, which is similar to the one we worked with in Lesson 2.4, and the Cloud class. So let's take a quick look at those. So one of the changes from 2.4 if you recall, is that now the constructor accepts a position, which means that when you create a tree, you have to tell the JavaScript class where to place the tree. And you'll also see that we removed the move method because, again, now when you create the tree, you have to specify a position, and that's being all done in the constructor. We kept the scale class uh, just, just as a way of exploring what we can do with multiple scalings. Heading on over to the cloud class, we'll see a couple of different things here. Uh, we also, similar idea, and, and this is not a common thing, uncommon thing to do, that when you create an object, that you have to specify its location. We also have an additional variable for speed, and we'll talk about that, how that plays down here. The other thing that you're going to see is that we are creating class variables for the cloud, uh, variables for the x, y, and the z. This is also a common thing to do uh, with parameters uh, that are accepted through the constructor, that you want to store these variables. Again, it doesn't always have to be. Again, if you don't need the information for later on, that's OK. From there, we construct a cloud by simply uh, using dodecahedrons as, <laughs> like I listed in the variable, the puff of the cloud. In order to kind of be more efficient, I used a for loop. Uh, to simply create the A-frame component, set its position accordingly, so that way they're not on top of each other, simply by increasing the x value by 1.5 of each puff, and then adding that puff to our variable this.object. And you'll notice that I use this as kind of like a standard for all the classes that I create dealing with A-frame, that I use the this.object variable to store the entity that has all those components that comprise the object that you're creating. Moving on down to the move function, this cloud, again, as clouds happen in the sky, they move. So we're using the variable this.x, and this is one of the reasons we have to store that value when we first get it as part of the constructor, is that we're going to increase that value by speed every time the move method gets called. And if you kind of think about it, that's somewhat like animation. So yes, we're going to be bringing back some of that knowledge we've learned about how to animate objects in A-frame. And then the last part is pretty self-explanatory. We now have to position it after we've adjusted the x value. The last thing we have to cover is the helper file. So the helper file is not a class. It's just, uh, for right now, it's just a random function. But this is also a common thing to do that if you have a lot of you know, useful functions that you want to use in the logic of your program, simply store them in a separate JavaScript file. Uh, again, so that way your main file does not get clouded. Now, some of you might be looking at this as, how is that a function? Again, if you, this is what's called an arrow function. If you're not familiar with this, please look it up. It's actually not that bad to understand. But this is the equivalent of this. And you might say, well, if it's equivalent, why show it to us? That's because in the next video series of lesson three, we're going to need to use this type of function uh, in order to gain access to some additional properties of the arrow function. But again, I want to get ahead of ourselves. That's for you know lesson three videos. Right now, I just wanted to show you that this is a function, and it's simply just going to re generate a random number. Uh, just so we don't have to keep doing this in our program every single time. Uh, we could simply use the RND function. And let's go to our JavaScript now. So it feels like we're covering a lot, but that's okay. Uh, again, it's going to make everything that we go through in the video a lot easier. So you'll see here we have our onload, we create, get our scene, we have our loop function, which now we sets up our recursive loop in order to animate things in our world. The additional thing that you'll see here is that I've created a, uh, a variable that's an array. Again, 
If you're unfamiliar with arrays, there's a lot of great resources out there to kind of cover it. But the, the short explanation is that an array allows you to store multiple things in it. All right, now we're ready to actually tackle <laughs> one of the goals in the, in the overview slide at the beginning. So let's generate multiple objects. Now to do that, a for loop is quite nice. Uh, again, we could generate as many things as we want. So I'm going to start i at 0. Again, at this point, it really doesn't matter where we start i at. And let's say 50. And let's do i++. plus plus. Now I'm going to kind of do this slightly backwards. So for this first loop, what I want to do is I want to generate a lot of trees in our world. Uh, our, world is, our world is empty. And if you recall, in order to generate a new tree, going back to our tree class, we have to specify an x, y, and a z. But I want to do that using random values. I'm going to talk a little bit about this syntax right here <laughs> after I get those random values. So let's say let x equals rnd, that function that's coming from the helper file. And let's simply say negative 20 to 20. So we're going to randomly choose an x value sideways. Let's do the same thing for our z value, which is our depth. Now you might say, well, why not the y? If you recall, the y is up and down. Now, because these are trees, I'm going to actually put them on the ground. So let's say x, 1, and z. So the x will be a random value sideways. The z will be a random values in and out. And the y is going to be a constant value at once. So that way, all the trees are on the ground. Now let's talk about this syntax here. Because in many cases, when you create a new object uh, from a class, you typically like to store it in a variable. And you could have done that here. But this syntax actually is OK as well. Reason being that within the constructor, if you recall, we do add the tree to the scene. So something is happening. Now, because we're not looking to do anything else with the trees other than just simply populate the world, this is OK. Now, I should have done this in, at the beginning, so I'm just going to cut this for a second just to show you what the world looks like. Again, it's empty. Uh, let's put that code back in, and now let's run it. And you'll see now we have 50 trees, all at random positions. Now, if I was to run, it, run this again, I would get another 50 trees in different locations. And you might see that some of the trees will overlap. Uh, again, I'll leave that up to you as to how to solve that problem. All right, cool. Now let's work with some clouds. So similar function, so let's say let i, well, similar technique of the for loop. And let's only add 20 clouds. And I'm just going to borrow these random functions here as well. And for the clouds, I will create a y random value. So that way, there's a couple of clouds that might be higher in the sky, a couple of clouds that would be lower. And let's do this from, let's say, 5 to, eh, we'll leave it to 20. So that way, the clouds will range somewhere from like maybe up here to way further up in the sky. And let's create a cloud variable. And there's a reason I'm creating a cloud variable as compared to doing it this way for the tree. So for this particular loop, uh, we will be storing the variables, uh, the objects in a variable, because then we're going to transition this object over to our array. So we're actually going to store all the clouds in the array. Again, an array is a variable, so we're going to have access to that information later on. Let's review real quick how a cloud is created. So in order to create a cloud, we need the x, y, and z. We got that. But we also need a speed variable. So let's handle that one. That's just another random function, uh, call to the random function here. And let's vary it between 1 and 5. And now I'm going to divide it by 100. Because if you recall from earlier videos, you know motion in a frame, you know, the value of 1 is a very big value. So if you want to move things smoothly, you want to move it at a very small value. So if we generate a random number of 1 and then divide it by 100, we're essentially getting 
0.01. Uh, same thing with the 5. So if we generate a 5, then we'll get 0 0.05. Again, slight 5 times faster than, than the 1. And we, we will also get the, all the other values in between, uh, the 2, the 3, and the 4. So now let's pass these values into our constructor for the cloud. So first thing we're going to do is we're simply going to see that the clouds are, are up there, which is nice. Again, if we were to run this again, we would get the clouds, in, the clouds in different positions. Now we want the clouds to move. So we have this recursive loop already set up that once we've created all our objects, we're simply calling the loop and the loop is kind of going through it. Now right now, the loop uh, isn't doing anything. So what we want to do is we want to store this cloud in this array so that in the loop we can go through all the clouds. So let's do that. So clouds.push of cloud. Again, if you're unfamiliar with how to work with arrays, again, there's a lot of great resources out there uh, to kind of review it. But what push does is that it will add this cloud to this array. And let's do that. And I'm just going to go right here down to the console. And I should be able to do this. Let's say clouds. <laughs> no, let me do it a different way. I just want to prove to you what's inside of clouds. All right, so here's my array with all the different clouds that are in there. Now, if you're not familiar with the developer's tool, uh, again, it's a great way to kind of investigate what's going on in your world. Uh, again, through the variables that are available, and you can actually run some JavaScript code here as well to kind of troubleshoot. But I'm going to go back to <laughs> this little window here, and I'm going to refresh it. Okay, so now that we have all our clouds stored in that array of clouds, we need to process through that. Now, again, if you've worked with arrays before, you know that typically when you have an array, you will work with a loop of some type in order to go through the array. So I'm going to show you this slightly different version of the for loop, um, which works nicely with arrays. So I'm going to say for let cloud of clouds. What this does is that this will actually pull each of the clouds that we've pushed onto this array out, and then we can process it. And all we want to do with the cloud is simply move. Now, where does this move method come from? If you go back to the cloud class, you'll see that we have a method to handle the motion of a cloud, which is simply increasing the values of x um, by whatever random value of speed. So if you kind of think about it, if I'm increasing the x, it's going to go in this direction. Now, I could have easily produced a random negative number to have the clouds go the other way. And that might be something nice for you to do if you want to have crisscrossing clouds, which I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> the clouds don't usually travel in the same direction. Uh, but in any case, that's something for you to explore. Right, so let's go back to our JavaScript. And let's run it. And there you go. And you'll notice that some clouds are moving faster than others. Uh, and if you kind of turn around, you'll see that you know we had clouds all around us traveling. And they're just going to go nicely into the uh, horizon there. Again, that will be left as another uh, exercise for you as to you know how can I get a constant flow of uh, clouds scrolling through the screen. All right. So this was a lot. Um, again, and you're going to notice that as we go further into these videos, we're going to be using many of the knowledge that we have uh, and build on it. Let's go back to our presentation. So in this video, we explored how we can generate multiple objects uh, using the for loop. Uh, we also saw the key of having to go back to the class to understand how a class is created. Again, the constructor is important when creating new objects. Because we were generating multiple objects and we wanted to be able to have access to them later in our program, we used arrays. Uh, and with arrays, we also explored another version of the for loop that's very handy when it comes to working with objects. So hopefully you're excited to be able to generate many things from the classes that you've 
uh, designed and enjoy.